Game creation is a beautiful act. It's also a trying one. With the help of garlic gulping Wario, you too can now make a tiny moment of zen on your DS with fantastic tools, exhaustive tutorials, and a lot of elbow grease. After cranking out a few of your own micro games with WarioWare DIY, you'll know that success is truly the product of 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Look alive! Schools in session. Wario's journey to Miyamotodom starts with three lengthy multi-part lessons. Between the glib patter, you'll learn the ropes of the Super Makermatic 21, the game design station in Wario's world. Music, graphics, and assembly instructions are what make the games come to life. The former two can ultimately be padded out using built-in assets or asking the maestro to whip up a tune. The assembly instructions sit as the heart of the games you build. This is where the pseudo-code is tapped out. Winning conditions and the rules that determine how objects respond to other objects are all determined here. It's entirely possible to fumble through the forgiving tutorials and emerge without a solid grasp, so fortunately, there are instructional challenges that play out like logic puzzles that won't hold your hand. The music and graphic capabilities are stunning. While Adobe won't have to inquire about copyright infringement, there are a lot of tools to help you draw and animate. Though pixel precision can be difficult, making that DSi XL screen look appealing. Meanwhile, any chiptune junkie will have a field day cruising the game's sound fonts. <laughs> it's conceivable to slave away for hours, especially if you want to make original art assets, to get your game just right. Then it's over in the blink of an eye. The ability to trade through the DS or a premium Wii channel reinforces the fact that hard work isn't its own reward, recognition is. The other slide is that, when all is said and done, games are all about tapping. No button presses, microphone hums, or even stylus scrubbing is allowed. To tap or not to tap isn't the question, it's the edict. Yay! <laughs> Nintendo deemed it necessary to not just ship an excellent tool set, but pack it in with some games as well. The included 90-odd games suffer from the tap-only issue, as they were made with the very same tools at your disposal. That does mean, though, that they can be studied and cribbed off of from their art to their assembly. There are also a few boss battles, which are longer than the average micro game, though one of them is an awful sliding number puzzle. Those weren't any fun when the doctor gave you one after your booster shots, and they still aren't. The fact that you can't build your own boss battles is also a bummer. Rounding out the games are a number of activities, like assembly puzzles, graphic jobs Wario wants you to do on his games, music to listen to, comic books to read, and more. Little medals are rewarded, and scores are tallied. Nintendo has added a little flash to the doldrums of creation. There just isn't always much sizzle behind it. From his original handheld debut to his super flat outings on consoles, Wario has always had style. He'd probably call it chutzpah. It's represented here with tons of sprites, both animated and still. The music is as catchy as ever, even the auto-generated stuff. The adventurous can even try humming into the mic and letting the game interpret the tones. The whole package is easy on the eyes and ears, but the process of refining your own creations is sometimes frustrating especially when you see the gorgeous art that the packed-in games bandy about so casually. If you're coming to this party, be prepared to play, just not in the traditional way. The 90-something built-in games are a paltry offering for the series, and the tap-only ethos really starts to wear on once you start to hit your stride as a designer. Still, the toolset is inspired, and those with the connected Wii and the ambition and wallets could potentially find their 15 milliseconds of fame.